It smells like a video store in here. They call us tapeheads, a nostalgic breed of video hoarders. Join me as I take a look at some of the most insane collections. Search the wild for that next rare find. And bask in the glory of VHS. I love, I love an item. I love putting a tape in a player. I love watching the previews at the start of the tapes. It does get back to nostalgia. I mean, of course it does, and I think it does for everyone that goes back to this sort of stuff. And again, it goes back to vinyl and everything as well. It's, it's about, the crux of it is, it's something that you couldn't have when you were young, and now you can have it. It's, it's, it's fun. Oh, for it goes back to the 80s you know when I was a kid and you couldn't really rent the tapes and you couldn't buy the tapes and all that sort of stuff and then about the late 90s early 2000s I suppose started buying them all up and it was and that was a great time too you could actually go and buy you know all this stuff that you saw in the early 80s that used to cost so much money you could never buy them you could go to local shops and in the big bins and buy them for a dollar each it was awesome and, you know you go out on the weekends and come back with you know 50 tapes and you've spent like 20 bucks it's great <laughs> The rare tapes are the ones that the old shops sold off for a dollar earlier on, and they only probably had one title of them on the, on the shelves back in the day, and that's why they're so rare. This is pretty common, I suppose, with a lot of collectors. They've got it all organised in like label, all that sort of stuff, all the CBS Fox stuff, all sort of video classics all down here. This is all the good old collectible KNCs and star bases. This is, a, this is a ride of the infancy of videos. This is one of the first labels that sort of hit the scene. KNC was the actual name of the company yep. and uh, had, had three labels. Go Video, which was their cheap product, yep. KNC, which was their mid-range, which was all sorts of stuff, and then the top line, top end stuff was Starbase. There are less and less options to find tapes now, yep. like even going to you know, flea markets and stuff and op shops, which are really the only options now, like you know, phew, it's pretty dry. <laughs> really dry. Um, they can't put anything that's R-rated on the shelves. Imagine, imagine what's been thrown out over the years. Just, you know, all the, all the good stuff that that's actually really is worth money. It's a, yeah. it's a valuable item that you can resell and make money out of. Yeah. Um, is still seen as junk. Here's some of the more novelty cases, I suppose. You know, your old classics, which everyone seems to love, your old Fright Night Coffin. Yep. Uh, a lot of collectors have these. Brain dead. Yep. 3D box thing. I love these video classics tapes. Oh, Spermula was always a favourite of mine. Spermula? Yeah. Great wow. stuff. Flying sex. There's a whole collector stream where that's all about condition. Yeah. Um, it's like anything, like vinyl, anything really, you know, and videos are sort of moving more away from people collecting the films on tapes to people collecting them as items. They're just collecting them now as items to display. Yep. So, you know, that, that definitely gets down to condition. These are some of the rarer tapes you'll see. These, these are the Palace X tapes. Oh, cool. These are only available behind the counter for about five or six months, I think. Yep. Um, full X-rated versions of each tape. Wow. That's cool. So, pink flamingos. Which so is, yeah, which is a beater. Woohoo! Yeah. So yeah, there's been a few of these pop up, but it's, it's always a exciting. Yeah. And I mean, the John Waters films. I mean, they're really hard to find. Really. To find. Yep. Desperate Living, Female Trouble, Brilliant Aussie oh. flick, Brian Trenchard Smith. You know, some people are really critical of you know graininess or a bit of a roll here or there. You know, if I put on a tape and it starts to roll a bit and it's got a bit of line, I think, yeah, that's cool. Same. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, I think yeah. it actually gives the character to actually Same. what you're looking at here. I'm not, if I want to watch a perfect copy of Back to the Future, my, my God, you know, there's a bazillion of them. Exactly. So put, put in a tape that's had a bit of life, it's cool. Yeah. And I don't want it to die either. Like, I mean, I find that a real sad thing. Like, you know, the industry is now dead. There is no video rental industry. At all, if, if collectors don't keep it alive and have collections and stuff, it'll be completely gone. Hi, my name is Christopher Boucher, and I'm a VHS collector from the United States. I've been collecting tapes for about seven years now. I've got probably around 3,000, give or take. 
I collect anything from adult films from the 70s into the early 80s, Grindhouse, Ruffies, stuff like that, obscure documentaries, rare hard tapes, anything that's hard to find I'm after. First one's Water Power. This is probably considered one of the holy grail adult tapes in America. Uh, it's a uh, roughie starring Jamie Gillis and it's kind of a rip off of Taxi Driver. Second will be The Taming of Rebecca on Avon Video Productions. Fun fact about this one is that it was found in the Corridor Killers VCR when the police raided his house. And lastly, this is like the king of the mall. It's called Wet Wilderness. It's like a backwoods slasher. It's got everything that you would want in a horror movie except it's an adult film. There's a crazy masked killer running around in the woods slashing people up. Thanks for checking out my tapes. See you later.